Deuteronomy 6.25, and it shall be our righteousness. This is what righteousness is. If we observe to do, not just read them, but to do all these commandments before the Most High, our power, ours is a person who possesses a problem, ours showing ownership, he's the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Jacob being the forefather of the 12 tribes of Israel, as he has commanded us, that's an order, from the Most High. To be righteous, you got to do what he say do. His rules and regulations, his law, chapter the commandments. So going now back to Proverbs 2 and 7, now that we know what righteousness is, he lays up sound wisdom for the righteous. And wisdom is the proper application of knowledge, how you learn it, live it, and apply it. This knowledge in your life to have wisdom. He lays up sound wisdom, proper application of knowledge. I will apply knowledge in your life for the righteous, for those that keep the laws of the Most High. He is a buckler, a shield, a protection to them that walk uprightly. Those that walk uprightly. See, it, but for the sinner, he's not, if you look at it opposite, hey, those that are sinners, he's not dealing with them. So he, he, he keepeth the paths of judgment. And preserveth the way of his saints. He preserveth the way of his saints. And we know the saints are the 12 tribes of Israel. Psalm 148, 14. He preserveth the way of his saints. Psalm 148, 14. He finds the saints. And these are, you know, um, certain words that I've given you. That you should already know by heart and when you see these words in the bible whether it's the old new or the apocrypha or whatever book you go into you know some people go outside the bible when you see righteousness you see saints this defines the saints psalms 148 14. he also exalted the horn which is the power of his people the praise of all his saints, defining the saints, even of the children of Israel, who are we are people near to the Most High. Praise ye the Most High. So the saints are the 12 tribes of Israel. We are the saints. So going back to Proverbs 2 and 8, he said, He keepeth the paths of judgments. He keepeth the paths of judgment. Then you know that there is a price to pay. That's judgment, something that you're going to get for not keeping his commandment. And preserve it the way of his saints. Then shall they understand righteousness. See? Then you understand how to keep the laws of the Most High, the commandments of the Most High. In judgment, in equity, yeah, every good path. You see? Every good path. What's good? Let's find out what's good. What's a good path? Everybody can say you can go this way, that way, just follow your heart, that's what the world tell you. But what's really good? Let's find out. Romans 7 and 12. That's why I'm giving you definitions through the spirit of the most high because I can't take credit for anything. It just it comes out. I give all the glory and honor to the most high. Follow someone set the other side. So Romans 7 and 12. Wherefore the law is holy. Okay. And the commandment holy and just and good. So the commandment and the law of the most high are holy and good. Right? So from there, let's look at uh, Psalms, the 37th chapter. Psalms, the 37th chapter. And we're going to read from 1 to 6. Fret not thyself because of evildoers. See that? Say, fret not thyself because of evildoers. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. So you have to be concerned about the evildoers. And you can't be envy, envious of the workers of iniquity. All the things you see people doing, you think that they're righteous. They're not righteous. When you ever see anybody tell the world, in the entertainment, sports, or whatever, keep the commandments of the Most High. We got to keep the laws of the Most High. And I'll wait. I ain't going to hold my breath because I know I got it. I'll be out of here. You don't see that. Of those that are of this world, you know, 
that are not keeping the laws of Most High, for therefore they're not righteous. And we define righteous, so they're evil. Whether you want to accept it or not, either you only got two choices. Or one choice out of two, I might say, to be righteous or to be evil and wicked. That's why I say, fret not thyself because of evil doers. Don't be concerned about them evil doers. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. You don't be envious at all, anyway. It says, for they shall soon be cut down. And if you part of, you know, being envious, you want to get with where, wherever they at in their evil doings, you're going to be cut down right with them. You say, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. That's the judgment. This is punishment. Trust in the most high. Trust in the most high. That's what we're saying over and over again. We keep hearing it. That trust is having faith in him. Let me define faith so you know what that trust is. In Hebrews 11 and 1. This defines faith. What faith is. That this is the trust that he's talking about. So if you trust someone, when you say you believe in them, That's what he want us to do. Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith, this is the definition of faith, is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. So faith is the things hoped for. Something that you hope to happen when in the future. The evidence of things not seen. The evidence of things not seen. So you can't, you have, if you already see what you desire, what's the point of desiring it? If you already have it, it's something you hope for. It's something that you trust in. That's why I say trust is faith. Going back to, you believe in him. Going back to Psalm 37 to 3. Say trust in the most high. And do good. We just find good. You see how, see how when you understand these definitions, how when you see these words, you say, okay, it's been defined. So now when you see it, you say, oh, okay, good. We just read in Romans 7 and 12. The commandments and the laws of the Most High are good. That's why I say do good. You're doing what he say do. His rules and revelation. Trust in the Most High and do good. So shall thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the most high. Hear that delight thyself in the most high. Now, this should be something that when you when you get into uh like you said, delight yourself in the most high, then he's supposed to make you feel supposed to feel good about being in his word and studying and, and bringing forth his word or even relating it to someone. You hear my voice and you hear the word of the most high, trust in the most high. Do good, so thou thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself, he said, also in the most high, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. In the heart is your mind, the way you think. He gonna give you the desires of your mind, the way you think. He wants you to pray, you see. But there are conditions in that too. He was just praying, saying, see, they just pray down the most high gotta come through. No, you gotta have certain attitudes. So the ability to be able to not be having a certain problem, let me show you. you go to the Our Father prayer first and foremost. In Matthew 6 and 9, you got to have a certain it's a condition. You can't, no matter what is going on, you got to have this, you got to have this spirit. It's spiritual. Some people can't do it because they, they just have um, a non-peaceful way of living, life. Um, look at um, Matthew 6 and 14. This is after you prayed the Our Father prayer. You know, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, the kingdom come. Verse 14. Matthew 6, 14. He gave you clear commandments. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, 